Good evening viewers, my name is Linda Kruger and you're watching Point of View right here on TVC. Now the profession of counseling and psychology has long remained unrecognized to some extent and unregulated but um, this situation has changed with the recent passing of the Kenya's Counselors and Psychologists Act 2014. Now we'll be delving further into the issue of the profession of counseling and psychology, how it is perceived in society and how this um, piece of law seeks to regulate and um, maybe control the profession. Today in studio, I will be joined with a guest from the fraternity. We'll find out who she is right after this short break. And we're back. Welcome back to Point of View with me, Linda Kruger. Today in the studio, I am joined by Kate Mbao, a counseling psychologist with Arise Psychotherapy and Consultancy. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Linda. Now, I, I don't know about the viewers, but all this terminology, a counseling psychologist, what is that? What exactly do you do? A counseling psychologist. Now, to be a counseling psychologist means I've done some years as a psychologist. I've studied psychology for some years, mm -hmm. then gone back and done a master's to get to acquire the counseling psychologist. The master's was for counseling psychologist. Okay. Now, the psychology bit is just the basics. When you do a BA in psychology, you learn the basic theories, mm -hmm. you learn how it goes about human behavior and everything. Mm -hmm. When now you advance, to a master's, you now start specializing. You start specializing in the art of listening because you already have the basics. You start specializing in the art of understanding what mental health is and what is not. You also start to understand that there are other variables that do determine the well-being of the psychological well-being of a person. Now, if you were to go ahead and get the title of a doctor, mm -hmm. it means I have done my PhD and I've further specialized in something else. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, that's interesting. Now, um, let's, get, let's break it down a little bit for our viewers. When we talk about a, um, a psychiatrist and, and a psychologist, and now a counseling psychologist, Let's break it down uh, quite simply for us to get the, the basic um, knowledge of who does what and what happens where. Okay, we have the counsellor, mm -hmm. the psychologist, and the psychiatrist. Okay. Now, for the counsellor, maybe it's just basic, basic uh, know-how of mm -hmm. how to listen and how to have that audience where you listen to this person. Mm -hmm. Now, for the psychologist, it's you have the basics of human behavior and it can be either counseling psychology, mm -hmm. it can be forensic, it can be uh, industrial psychology, mm -hmm. it can be sports psychology, it can be nutritional psychology. Mm -hmm. Psychology is very broad. Now when you go to a psychiatrist, the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist is that a psychiatrist has undergone the six years of medical uh, medicine mm -hmm. and then decide to specialize in mental health as the surgeon would sp specialize in surger in surgery and then goes further to do heart okay. and everything. Mm -hmm. Now the biggest problem comes when people hear counselor and a psychologist. Yeah you won. It's a mixture. Now what is the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. The counselor most of uh, sometimes back we'd get people who do their diploma and it's general counseling. They have the know-how, they have the skills of listening, mm -hmm. they have the skills of giving you options. But again now when you hear a psychologist the ears are also different because now with psychology we say psychology is the study of human behavior. Okay? Mhm. Mm now, counselor is more on the listening and more on where we say talk therapy and issues that pertain talk therapy and some of the theories that pertain that. Mm -hmm. But now for psychology, it's just not listening. There's also the human behavior and understanding where these people come from. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So it's not just the basics of listening, there's also the understanding of why does this person behave the way they do. Mm -hmm. All right, now, um, Kate, for years, um, in, in my, my view and what's been perceived out there, uh, the Kenyan society hasn't been able to embrace the role that counselors and psychologists and even um, psychiatrists play in, in society. Do you think this has changed? Well, it has. I always laugh and I say the first time I decided to do my BA, mm -hmm. I was asked why I was doing psychology. Who will employ you? Yeah. But right now, there are avenues, and even with the way the human system has been working in Kenya, mm -hmm. there are incidences that have clearly shown the need for the field of psychology. Mm -hmm. Psychiatrists in Kenya had been recognized for a long time mm -hmm. because we did have Madare, and it was sensitized that if someone loses their mind, you go to Madare. Mm -hmm. So the mental health for the longest time had been recognized in terms of psychiatry care. But now there are issues that are not well been defined and people now coming to learn about it is issues like trauma, issues like performance anxiety, which our kids are having. Mm -hmm. Nowadays we are having high rates of teenagers committing suicide. Mm -hmm. We are having um, marital violence. We are having a lot of things happening. And the terrorism in itself is also creating something. Mm -hmm. Another thing that created a need for us was the post-election violence. It kept on escalating, so there was need. There's something that is not adding up. So if I was to say where we are right now, yes, there is some recognition for need of mental health workers and mental health uh, care, yeah. as opposed to before. But sometimes back, psychology was not well recognized as psychiatry. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, even up to now, you find people confuse us. They will come and ask, are you a psychiatrist or are you a psychologist? psychologist yeah. So we have to keep on constantly <laughs> telling them who we are. Okay. Uh, let's um, get down into the nitty gritty. Uh, when we talk about, um, um, as, let's use both examples, a psychologist and a psychiatrist, um, what happens uh, in, in, in how a psychiatrist treats you and how a psychologist treats you? And maybe what examples of, of mental disorders or issues does each, each um, address? Now with a psychiatrist, do they know how they have of a general practitioner? Mm -hmm. They can pick other ailments that our psychiatrists can't. Okay. They'll pick other <coughs> conditions and even treat them because they have the medicine line mm -hmm. in their they can portfolio. Medicine. The other thing is, psychiatrists in Kenya can't prescribe, and psychologists in Kenya cannot. Mm -hmm. But now when you get outside the country, you find different states in the U.S. will allow some psychologists to prescribe, especially if they're clinical psychologists, mm -hmm. they will be allowed to prescribe. But it's after a series of being mentored into it and having residential uh, work experience mm -hmm. where they get now to prescribe. But all along, the psychiatrist compared to the psychologist, the psychiatrist is more of a GP. So they will listen to your symptoms and they will give you medication. Mm -hmm. Now the psychologist will listen to the symptom, as I said, it's the study of human behavior and try and help you manage the behavior. So you have been diagnosed by the psychiatrist, you have been given prescription, you need to know how to live with that condition. Now, in terms of mental health uh, illnesses, mm -hmm. there are quite a number. There are mm -hmm. over 300 types of mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. The common ones that we hear or people sometimes might relate with is bipolar, depression, uh, general anxiety disorder, ADHD. Uh, we have uh, schizophrenia. So there are those ones are, are rampant, mm -hmm. but when you get to the nitty gritty, they are eating disorders, they are personality disorders. So it's not just a thing that I can sit back and say, you get to know it the first time. So the psychiatrist and the psychologist have to work together mm -hmm. because the psychiatrist will see this person for a certain time. Mm -hmm. We spend more time with the patient learning the their behaviors mm -hmm. and we have to work again with the psychiatrist because they have the know-how of the body system. Okay. So you cannot divorce the two. It has to be combined. It has to be combined. Okay, that's great, that's wonderful. Um, the healthcare system in Kenya, 
do you think it has given adequate resources and attention to uh, providing proper mental mental health um, uh, mental health care to the people? I would say we are evolving towards that end. For the longest time, people thought Madhara was just a mental health facility. Actually, it's a referral hospital, and all government referral hospitals mm -hmm. do have a an area specified for mental health. Every referral hospital has a mini Madare. Okay. But Madare, mm -hmm. as people for the longest time, identified Madare as if it was the mental hospital, mm -hmm. not necessarily. It was a referral hospital. So if you go to Kenyatta, you still get a position where they have a referral for mental health. Okay. Now, when you come to private, uh, mental health facilities, they are very, lead, they are very few. Mm -hmm. We have Bustani and Chiromo. Now, those are very few. Where we have a mushroom of them is where we have the rehabilitation centers for addiction. We have quite a number of them. But the mental health in terms of dealing with cl clinical cases, every hospital has a small uh, holding place that will cater for that. And if they can't handle them for a while, they will refer them maybe to Madari because it has a bigger space. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean Madari is just for mental cases. Okay, yeah. okay it's a referral hospital. It's a referral hospital. But in terms of finances, do you think um, there's been adequate, adequate concentration and, um, and attention given to it? Um, I refer to, to a documentary that was aired on CNN about um, the mental health um, issue and care offered in Kenya. And, and the picture was very damning. It was, it was heartbreaking. Do you think steps have been positively made to ensure that um, there's no stigma associated with it, that if, if you have a mental illness, you're, you're treated as if someone who has cancer or any other person out there. Do you think there's been a positive step? Um, the stigma is still there. Up to to date, I think I'm asked whether I've gone to see my mental people. Have you gone to see the mad people? Up to today, yeah. I have to constantly refer that the people I see in my office are rather not that serious. They are not yet gotten to where they're hospitalized. They're normal people, mm -hmm. what we call normal. Yes. By the time someone is being admitted, that's where we say, now this one has become unmanageable and they need to be contained and stabilized by medication for a certain period before they can access some therapy, form of therapy from us guys. Mm -hmm. Now, the stigma is still there. Sometimes back, Madara was free. There was an allowance. I think at some point they used to actually pay people to take mental people or someone suffering from mental health there. Mm -hmm. But with the constraints of the economy, it's become not a priority. Uh, poverty is really getting into a space like, for instance, sometimes I'll see a client and the client will be, would I be coming to talk to you or thinking about how I will fend for my kids? And clearly, that person needs help. help. But it's not the priority. The subsidized for mental health needs to be taken care of. As we are busy thinking about cancer mm -hmm. and as we are busy, busy thinking about HIV, mental health is also a place where needs to be looked into. Mm -hmm. Maybe go back to where we knew that we can take someone for an affordable price and they'll be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Now with Madari as a referral, we know still it's affordable for anyone who wants to have mental health, but there are people who can't even afford that. So indeed, there need indeed. to be some allocation for that mm -hmm. and a priority because it's an illness like any other illness. It's like high blood pressure or diabetes, not necessarily like cancer and HIV. Mm -hmm. This is an illness that someone needs to learn, some of them, how to live and manage it. So in essence, awareness will play a, a big part, maybe awareness to the masses uh, about uh, mental, Hill, man, mental health illnesses, sorry. Will, play, will it play a big part? It will, because for once it will create uh, it will try and demystify Indeed. what mental health is mm -hmm. and what mental, mental illness is. And the shock that goes with it, that it's okay, you can reach out for help. And if you see such signs, in the olden times when you saw such signs, we say 
amesoma sana mm -hmm. it's it's education that made him that way mm -hmm. or they used uh, marijuana to the extent where they lost it mm -hmm. or they were bewitched mm -hmm. now with the awareness that constantly i think now we are rather trying to do more of it and the incidences the westgate helped yes the post election have helped as negative as they are mm -hmm. people are starting to realize that there is need so the more we do of it and the more we create advocacy for mental health well-being the better people will be placed and stop neglecting it like something that will go away stop mm -hmm. burying their heads in the sand and wishing that it's gonna go away True. it's here with us we need to deal with it we need to face it we yeah. need to tackle it head on now let's talk a little bit about um, the act the Kenya counselors and psychologists act uh, what in essence is its core core uh, value or objective is it to regulate the profession or create leeway for the profession to be available to people what do you think is its core objective for the longest time the field had no regulation anyone could call themselves a counselor mm -hmm. so if I went for a one-month training in church I would call myself a counselor. reputable counselor and I will identify myself as such mm -hmm. now you might have the inborn intuition to listen and to advise but psychology in itself and counseling is not about advising because we also agree that human beings are dynamic and they need to pave their own path mm -hmm. so sometimes we advise with our own objectives and our own life experiences not with the client in mind now with this act what it does it regulates it makes it recognizable and makes it for the longest time psychologists relied on psychiatrists to employ them mm -hmm or NGOs because you were not recognized on your own not unless someone came and paid you but even insurances would not pay for mental health wow. not unless it comes for, from a referral from a doctor mm -hmm. now with this act it makes it more legit and the government acknowledges that this is a valid profession. Mm -hmm. It comes with regulations because for the longest time we were using ethics which were borrowed from the US and mm -hmm. borrowed from uh, British mm -hmm. or South Africa or Australia. Now for once we can sit down and come with ethics that are viable in our situation. Mm -hmm. That reflect the Kenyan that reflect. society. And it also protects the clients mm -hmm. without a body of regulation you see if I see you and I mess up no one I'm answerable to no one indeed now having this body means I will be accountable to a certain body I know that I cannot just handle you anyhow mm -hmm. because there are certain rules that governs what I do just as there are certain rules that governs lawyers accountants and doctors the psychologists it's high time, like yesterday, we needed the act. So it was mm -hmm. a good thing mm -hmm. that the act passed. That's great. That's yeah. wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, the world of counseling and psychology. Join me after this short break as we continue to further look at the profession. You're watching Point of View. <laughs> 